Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. I'll be sharing two cards today using products from Pretty Pink Posh's recent August release. For the first card, I'm using the Mummy Wrap Stencil, and I have four different die sets. Ghost Shaker, Halloween Mug Editions, Winter Mug, and Halloween House. With some of the die sets, I'm only using one or two of the die images. I'll start off by stenciling the background. I have a piece of white cardstock in my mini stencil mat. The ink color I'm using is Serene by Catherine Pooler. I'll cover the entire background with a very light amount of color. I'll be using this stenciled piece for the background of my card, and most of it will be covered up with die cut images. Once I've inked up the entire background, I'll remove this stencil. I love the look of the mummy wrap. It's perfect for a fun Halloween card. Now I'll add a little more detail to the background. I'm using Catherine Pooler's Drive-In Ink Color. I'll press some of it on an acrylic block, spritz it with water. Now I'll add a splatter all over the background. And once it dries, it is a slightly lighter purple color. The stenciled panel is four inches by five and a quarter inches, and I'll layer it on some silver holographic cardstock. This piece is four and one eighth of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch. Even though you only see a tiny bit of the holographic cardstock, it still adds a lot of shine. Then I'll layer that piece on some black cardstock, put ATG tape on the back, and add my card front onto a card base. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Now it's time to assemble all the fun Halloween die cut images. I cut out the mug from some black cardstock and I'm adding a bright green bubbly potion inside. Put glue on the back, add the bubble first and also the drips. I love the look of the bright green cardstock against the black mug. Now I'll assemble the jack-o'-lantern, use some orange cardstock for the pumpkin, black cardstock for the face, and some brown cardstock for the stem. To adhere most of the pieces, I'm using a pair of reverse tweezers and barely art glue. For the tiny nose of the jack-o'-lantern, I'm adding the drop of glue down first and then picking it up with an embellishment wand, since it is very small. Now I'll assemble the witch's hat. I used two different purple cardstock colors and some gold mirror cardstock for the buckle on the hat. The last image to assemble is the broom. I use brown cardstock for the handle and the ties and yellow cardstock for the bristle portion of the broom. I'll first attach the handle, then add the tie around the bristles. Now I'll tuck the handle of the broom inside the mug. To secure it in place, I'm putting a piece of double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. I'll remove the release paper, then I'll add thin foam dimension on the back of the mug and also the broom. And I do need to cut some small pieces to put behind the handle of the mug. Since the mug is a dark color, I'm using black foam dimension. I'll make sure to get good coverage with the foam so there isn't one area that sags. I'll remove the release paper and add my mug on a vellum oval die cut. The stenciled background will still be visible through the vellum, but it'll add just that little bit of separation for the die cut images. After I've attached the mug, I'll flip over the oval, put glue on the back side just behind the die cut pieces. That way the glue doesn't show through on the vellum. Then I'll adhere the oval on the center of the card. Now I'll add the rest of the die cut images. First, I'll place some of them on the card without adhesive. That way I can get the placement for all the other die cut pieces. The jack-o'-lantern will go in the lower right hand corner, the witch's hat in the lower left hand corner. I cut out three small ghosts from some white shimmer cardstock. I'll tuck one behind the mug on the right side. Another will be flying up by the broom and one will be at the bottom between the jack-o'-lantern and the witch's hat. I am adding foam dimension behind the images in the areas where it goes off of the mug. And I'll put glue behind the images in the area where they're touching the mug. And I'll do the same thing for the ghost that's floating up by the broom. Put foam dimension behind its body and a little bit of glue behind his head where it's touching the broom. I'll also add a small spider image. I'm not sure if it's really a spider, it only has six legs. 
I use some dark purple pearlescent cardstock and I'll adhere it inside the mug sitting on top of the potion. For a sentiment, I added the word boo. I use some more of the silver holographic cardstock. I'll adhere it to the front of the mug. Using the same bright green cardstock, I'm adding three little bubbles above the mug. For a final finishing touch, I'll use a white gel pen to add highlights to the images. Putting some on the broom, the potion, the mug, witch's hat, jack-o'-lantern, and the bubbles. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. I love how this card turned out. The bright colors are perfect for a Halloween card. And I only make cute Halloween cards, never anything spooky. Now moving on to card design number two. For this card, I'll be using the layered Argyle stencil set, stitched pumpkins, and I'm also using two products that are not part of the release, spring foliage dies and falling leaves stamps and coordinating dies. I'll start off by stenciling the background. I'm using stencil layer A. This layer has the larger openings, lots of diamonds. I'm using Catherine Pooler's Ginger Ink Color, going for a very light coat of ink. I'll remove the first layer, then I'll bring in the second layer. This is B. It's one of the diagonal stripes. The ink color is spiced by Catherine Pooler. It's very similar to Ginger, just a little bit more brown. For this layer, I'll also add a very light amount of ink. I want the stencil background to be very subtle. When I finish that layer, I'll grab the third layer, more diagonal stripes, this time going the other direction. The ink color is Shade Butter by Catherine Pooler. I think the three colors work really well together. Very pretty for an autumn card. Even though most of the Pretty Pink Posh August release is Halloween related, there are still some items in there that work perfect for fall cards. So I thought it would be fun to do one Halloween card and one fall card. Once I finish with this stencil layer, I'll remove it and reveal the background. Isn't that pretty? I love how it turned out. I'll cut the panel to five and a quarter inches by four inches, layer it on some orange cardstock, put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Now I'll start working on some of the die cut images. This card will feature two pumpkins from the stitched pumpkin die set, also some flowers and foliage from the spring foliage set. I'll assemble the pumpkins first, put the stem on the back side. On the larger pumpkin, I'll put the vine on the left side. Then I'll adhere the leaf behind with just part of it peeking up on the left side. And for the smaller pumpkin, I'll attach the stem, put the vine on the right side, and then add the leaf on the back side. And you'll see just part of the leaf peeking up on the right side. After I've assembled both of the pumpkins, I'll flip them over, add some thin foam dimension on the back side, remove the release paper, and add both pumpkins on the center of the card. I'll put the larger pumpkin on the left side, the smaller pumpkin on the right, slightly overlapping the larger pumpkin. Now I'll assemble the flowers. I use yellow cardstock that matches the Shea Butter ink and also some light peach cardstock for the flowers. For the center of the flowers, I use some white shimmer cardstock. I'll first adhere those in place. The centers for two of the flowers are really small, so I am using my embellishment wand to pick those up. I'll put foam dimension on the back of the flowers, add two on the left side of the pumpkins and two on the right side. On the area of the flower that sits on the pumpkin, I'll add a little bit of Barely Art glue. Putting the larger light peach flower on the left side, then I'll add one of the yellow flowers next to it. On the right side, I'll first add one of the yellow flowers and then the light peach flower. I cut out two foliage pieces and I will trim those down so I can fit them behind the flowers. I'll tuck the second foliage piece behind the flowers on the right side, then finally add the tiny yellow flower next to the stem on the larger pumpkin. For a sentiment, I'm adding autumn blessings. I heat emboss the word autumn using some white embossing powder, 
and I'll glue it at the bottom of the pumpkins. Just part of the word autumn is hanging off the edge. Then I'll add blessings underneath on the right side. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. I love how this card turned out. The colors are so pretty and the stitched pumpkins are one of my favorite sets from the new release. Now here's another look at the four cards I made using some of the new products from Pretty Pink Posh's August release. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. If you're on Instagram, I'm participating in the Instagram hop to help celebrate the August release. There's lots of inspiration and a chance to win a Pretty Pink Posh gift card. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.